All right. Welcome, everyone, to episode 52. 52! <laughs> the joke I was making is 52 pickup. But today we're not going to pick up 52 things, are we, Andrew? No, it's a deck of cards, by the way. Nice. Yeah. Sound effect for the visual <laughs> listeners. Just kidding. So this is episode 52 of the Average Ontario Anglers Fishing Podcast. Today we have a very cool episode because we have a very special guest. And our guest is Wes from Wham Baits. How are you doing, Wes? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Eh, we're okay. Just kidding. We're super happy. <laughs> we have Wes on the podcast. That's, that's, that's awesome. We, we're, we're doing average. We're just doing average. It's true. Uh, this is awesome. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. For sure. And if you've listened to this podcast for any amount of time, you'll always know that we really like Wes because he's a super cool guy and he's a gold member. But before we get into the main topic, which right now is a secret, you probably figure it out, but it's a secret right now. We're going to have an interesting fishing fact. And for the first time in Average Ontario Anglers podcast history, me and Andrew are not doing the interesting fishing fact. The guest is going to be doing that. So as tradition states, the interesting fishing fact, and to handle that, the man with the mustache, Wes <laughs> from Wambates. <laughs> Dazzle us. All right. So yeah, I just uh, thought we would break down a little bit of the history of the soft plastic lure, because that's basically where my my world is. So the history starts off, you know, we know like James Hedden and everything in the in the 1800s with the hard plastics and stuff like that, or the hard baits. By 1949, Nick Cream from Cream Lures, based in Akron, Ohio, that brand is still around now. So he creates the first soft plastic worm using a vinyl resin base, PVC base that we know from, you know, plumbing pipes and stuff like that. So obviously they have, they mix it with a plasticizer and a heat stabilizer to make sure it's not you know, as hard as a PVC pipe. So it gives it that flexibility and as well as the rigidity for durability. 1951, he starts, you know, selling these things through an outdoors magazine. He pulls out all the, uh, buys all these ads in an outdoor magazine and starts taking all these mail order for, for his worms. So that evolution keeps going for, you know, 32 years. I guess nobody caught any fish on these worms because for 32 years, they didn't use any salt. And we all know that salt in plastic baits adds weight, adds sinking, you know, ability, but it also decreases durability, which a lot of people don't really pay much attention to. They want you know, the action, they want softness, they want the, the, the flavor. But apparently for 32 years, all the bass were eating all these things that were tasting like truck tires, <laughs> I guess. So 1983 comes around. The first salt craw was introduced by Jean LaRue Lures, another brand that's mm -hmm. still around today. In that time, they applied to patent having salt in an artificial lure in 1985. Okay. And for, since until 2002, so 17 years uh, other brands that wanted to put salt in their baits would pay them a royalty to do it. Wow. <laughs> like, imagine paying a royalty to put salt in a steak or in, you know, your potatoes or, you know, it's something like something like that. And uh, and it's kind of funny. So 1996, something very important happens. Gary Yamamoto designs the Senko worm um, after a ballpoint pen, something like that. Something so inane that, you know, the design <laughs> was, was just, you know, hammered by all these pros that he took it to. And, and, you know, uh, I think it was Roland Martin that said it was the stupidest thing he's ever seen. <laughs> yes. And, and it's, you'll never, you'll never sell any, you'll go broke. The opposite happens. It becomes the big, the biggest thing since sliced bread. Right. So 2002 rolls around the patent on putting salt in artificial bait expires. Okay. And that happens, the bait world goes officially insane, loses its mind, everybody puts salt in. Now, if you look up the patent for putting salt in baits, the ratio that they patented was 0.5% to 3% of the weight of the worm. Now, because I like you guys, I went and sacrificed, I fell on this sword, okay? I bought a pack of Senkos, okay? They weren't on sale. They were full price. So that's like now, $80. Yeah. I know, right? Um, <laughs> he, he, got a, he got a collector's pack that was signed by Gary Yamamoto himself, and he just ripped it open, unsealed it, weighed it, <laughs> had to make sure it was the real deal. And what I did with it, he's going to be rolling around in his grave. Trust me. <laughs> Is he dead? He's dead. Yeah, long ago. Oh. Um, oh. Not long ago. 2020. RIP. RIP Gary Yamamoto. 
what I did was I melted down. I was curious, right? I want to see how much salt he actually puts in his base, right? Put past tense. So I melted them down and a pack of eight worms comes to roughly three eighths of a cup of plastisol. Okay. And for all of you visual listeners that Andrew likes to talk to all the time, <laughs> this is the amount of salt in a Senko. I don't know oh, if at you the can bottom, see that yeah. too much. Wow. At the bottom there. That's like 40%. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that explains why there's durability issues and all kinds of ripping off. You know, you, they last one fish if you're lucky. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm not going to say it, but you're going to throw your, you're, you're throwing your money down the toilet when when you're just buying these big bait brands. And that's the long and the short of interest. Uh, I, I guess we'll get into that more into the into the episode. But, you know, that means a lot to myself in terms of the quality that people are putting into their into their work. So, hmm. That is officially the interesting fishing fact. Hopefully it's interesting. That was interesting. I liked learning about the salt. That explains why Sanko brand specifically tastes better as a boatside snack above any other plastic bait out there. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. You know what? Andrew has never bought something and destroyed it to talk about it on a podcast. So I'm going to give you an A for that. Just to have the guts to go out and spend $100 on a pack of uh, that branded lures. We're going to get canceled. Dude, just kidding. But... <laughs> Well, next week, I'm going to buy a brand new iPhone and then smash the camera to explain why it doesn't take as good of photos about fishing <laughs> as an Android does. So <laughs> <laughs> We're reaching out to our Patreons. Uh, if you want to help support this lofty goal of being able to buy iPhones and smash them. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, before we get into the main topic, we just have a few announcements. We would like to thank everyone who has recently wrote us a review. We're actually, we're hoping to get a lot more reviews. So if you are someone that is like, man, I love this podcast. I listen to it every week, but every time they tell me to write a review, I don't because I'm driving. Here's a reminder to remember when you're not driving to give us a review. We really appreciate it. We would also like to thank all of our Patreon members for making uh, this show possible as well and supporting the costs that uh, occur every week doing this weekly show. So this episode is actually pretty interesting because as you know, if you've been watching our, our social media accounts or YouTube channels for the last like five years and our podcast, we are huge fans of supporting local tackle shops and local bait makers. We've done, like last year, we did over 20 giveaways of small local tackle shops. This year, we're starting up again, have a whole bunch of them as well. This month, we've had four, one every single week so far giveaways. And we have a giveaway this week too. And guess who it's by? Wham Bates, if you didn't guess that correctly, you're pretty dumb. But anyway, <laughs> we love supporting local tackle shops. We're going to talk to Wes. And this is what the whole episode is about. It's about being a bait maker. Now, I know I've thought about doing it. Have you, Andrew? Yeah, we, we've had talks together of like, man, like I, I would just pour three different colors of these three different patterns and, and that's it. Yeah. But uh, I know we have some questions for Wes, but then we looked at how much it costs yeah. to have a small little hobby of doing this and we're like, we'll just buy them from yeah, Wes. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm sure if you've been in, into fishing, if you're a serious angler or you're someone that just likes creating and making stuff, you've probably at one time or another thought about making your own baits. May it be soft plastics, may it be you know, jigs or something that is in the fishing industry. You've probably thought about it and you've probably looked it up but we're actually going to talk to someone who actually does it successfully. <laughs> Here we go. We have a bunch of questions that me and Andrew have compiled. So we're me and Andrew are going to kind of go back and forth and uh, go through them. So these are questions for Wes from Wham Bates. So our first question is something that like we just talked about. What inspired you to start your bait making business in Ontario? Well, what inspired me to start it in Ontario is that I live in Ontario so I really Fair. didn't have any other things Fair. to put it. <laughs> so anyways, no, I think just, uh, so I picked up fishing again. I used to fish at my uncle's cottage and stuff like that as a kid. We pull sunfish out and rock bass and stuff like that. But really, you know, didn't get into it until later on in life. You know, and I say later on in life because, you know, it was a few years ago. I don't want to say it's, uh, you know, I'm not in my sunset years or anything like that. But, <laughs> you know, later on in life, relatively speaking, and, and, you know, I was looking around as a newer angler, looking in the stores, looking online and stuff like that, researching a bunch of stuff, what works where and, and everything like that, trying to find, you know, baits that, that were good quality that would work. And I grabbed a bunch of the most popular stuff as everybody would and just didn't, didn't felt unfulfilled in terms of quality that was out there, the selection that was out there. I remember walking up and down Bass Pro and just looking at a bunch of things that all kind of looked the same, you know, and, and I get it that we're trying to mimic 
a crawfish or a, or a bait fish or, uh, or a worm or something like that. And there's only so many ways you can do that. But for me, I like to march to the beat of my own drum a little bit and just, I, I like to find stuff that, that still works at, at a, as a proven technique, but something a little bit different. Right. I think what really struck me was when I was using them, you know, we were catching and stuff like that, but again, you're ripping off and, and just like every couple fish and it's just like you're, you're, you're getting frustrated, right? Because you want to spend time and enjoy the outdoors and really get satisfaction out of the fishing. And, and we just weren't cause we were just like retying and re-rigging and everything like that. And it was, you know, it was a pain. So yeah, I, I had this, this thought in the back of my head saying like, you can, you can do this. Like you, it, there's a way to make this better, right? Like, and I, I'm always looking for ways to kind of improve on, on things that exist. Right. So, you know, when I decided to pick up bait making, I did, I did a ton of research. Like I was on YouTube, I was on the internet, I was looking at, you know, all kinds of, you know, how do I start it? What do I need? And, and everything like that and getting all the tips, getting all the ABC, the steps and stuff like that, what you need, what the essentials are and budgeting out was, was uh, mind bending because there's so <laughs> many different options out there. So talk, talking about that, just because that kind of leads into the next question, like the process of you starting your brand, like what was, you talked about like those different steps you had to kind of get all your ducks in a row. So like, what was some of the things that you, you did have to focus on and, and get prepared for before you could actually start, uh, you know, making these baits and selling them as a business? So, I mean, the, the first thing was, was the research. Um, like I talked about, I, I, it was probably three or four months at least that I was, every single night, just like pouring over YouTube videos and, and reading internet articles and and going through looking at, you know, guys that have done the same thing, trying to learn from them, (laughs) creeping them on, on social media and stuff like that, looking at their work and just, you know, getting, getting little pointers here and there, trying to glean whatever I could. Right. The second thing was, you know, passing it by the wife saying, Hey, this is what I want to do. Right. And, and kind of figuring what she, what she thought of it. Cause you know, if she got the the red light, then it was a no go anyways. Right. So, um, but she said, yeah, go ahead, you know, like budget it out, make sure everything everything makes sense and and you know what you're doing and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got this. (laughs) But uh, in terms of budgeting out, I was, I was almost down to the penny. Um, and I was, what I had to do basically was, was decide to go all in. I had a sports memorabilia collection, had signed pictures from, you know, Bobby Orr and Wayne Gretzky and Patrick Waugh and, you know, all these, all the, the big names, right? So those are names so, even I recognize, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so those, those went out the door on, on marketplace or on, you know, uh, Facebook groups or, or what have you. And, uh, sold my golf club, sold my bike. Cause I wasn't using it anyways, but anyways, you know, I just, I wanted to go all in and, and, you know, if I was going to do this, I didn't want to leave anything on the table. I wanted to know that I gave it everything I could and tried it. And if it failed, then, you know, I flip everything and, and, you know, sell everything and I'm at a net zero. I haven't lost anything. Right. Except for mm-hmm. the stuff that I sold, but you know, <laughs> so it's a, it's a big decision so, is basically what you're saying. It, yeah. it is. It's something not to be taken lightly, obviously. And, and it turned out, you know, it t- started up as a hobby. You know what I mean? Like learning experience. I wanted to try something new. thought I could save some money on, on baits instead of, you know, paying $10 a pack or whatever, you know, saving in the long run. If I was going to be fishing for the rest of my life, hopefully that, I wanted to be able to be self-sufficient a little bit. And then, you know, people started using them, um, you know, coworkers and friends and stuff like that. And they were catching on them and stuff, you know, so I just started posting stuff on Instagram. And and I think that the, the biggest thing for me, uh, I'm going to backtrack just a little bit. The biggest thing for me was not being the same as everything else that was out there. I wanted to have a little bit different of an approach, take a, a proven tactic, say a, a, a a wacky worm or, or a Texas rig worm or, or a stick bait and kind of have a different approach of it a little bit. I was looking for something different, right? Something that was a staple in everybody's box that, that people would be very, you know, not hesitant to buy because they know it works. Right. Mm-hmm. But something having familiar. Something, yeah. Something familiar, something that, but something that has my twist on it. Okay. And I looked for, again, all that time researching, I'm looking at mold companies as well, trying to budget out some, some molds to start out with, you know, pick three or four different, different ideas and kind of go from there. And that was, that was obviously part of the budgeting, which was important to me to have something that is unique. And that's also kind of, I think a big selling feature that, you know, there's the, I can't count honestly, how many times people have said, you know, I've never seen anything like this before. 
<laughs> I've said that myself to you. Like if you look through your website, half of the baits I've never seen. Like it's, it's, I know a lot of like bait makers when they start, there's some popular molds that everyone has. Like every single guy I know that makes baits has this one, this one, this one. But with you, it's like, I've never seen that or that the frog or like the flipping baits, they're unique molds. Like, it's not like you're the only one in the world that has them, but I've never seen them around here at all. That I really appreciate. Honestly, that is one of the biggest compliments that, that I receive, right? Like that, that I take as, you know, next to, you know, your bass, base lasts forever. The next one down is I've never seen this before, or, or this is totally different. It's very unique. Like something that, that is not commonly seen. It took me, it took me a year and a half to buy a regular five inch stick bait mold. <laughs> and that was literally just to fill custom orders. Cause guys are saying, you know, I like the, the wobbling worm that, that you already offer, but I want this. Right. Yeah. So that was kind of my mentality going in is, is really having something that was different from everything else out there. For sure. I was just wondering for when you, when you started up, you said you had to buy, a, like obviously to buy a few things to get started making the baits. Yeah. Um, you need, like you said, you need your molds. What I often see in the videos is, is, is all I see is they have the molds and then they have a Pyrex glass cup they'll put in an old microwave and maybe you have the syringe or an open pour like was that all you started with or was there anything else that you also you know invested in up front to be able to so i i got a microwave off of marketplace for twenty dollars i got a an eight foot folding table um that i just throw in the garage and that was off marketplace it cost me ten dollars you need safety uh material heat gloves and a respirator and I'm holding up visual cues for all of our visual listeners, but those are, those are, those were important. Uh, safety, safety is always the first. And I'll tell you, he actually was holding up safety stuff. It wasn't just like, Hey, OSHA, it's That's chill. I'm holding these things up, but you can't see them. <laughs> I have a pot lid I put in my hood and just tighten up the drawstrings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's perfect. Yeah. But yeah, there is uh, some pretty nasty chemicals out there in, in the, in the plastic sauce and stuff like that. So, you know, I want to make sure that I can do this for a long time, not just <laughs> for a couple of years and, and then kick the bucket. That's not the goal here. <laughs> so kind of get on to our third uh, question here, kind of like rolls into it. Sure. So obviously, as you're describing, like getting into it, lots of research, lots of equipment that you have to buy. I know like when I first was kind of thinking about it, I was like, like we, we know even with this podcast, there's a lot more than it looks like there's a lot more equipment. There's a lot more right. stuff that you have to do than it looks. Everyone's like, oh, you're just talking to a microphone, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that is true, but that's a small part of it in, in the, in the grand scheme of things. But all of this research you had, all this equipment that you have to get, all of this like trial and error, kind of talking on the trial and error. The third question is, how do you ensure the quality and effectiveness of your baits for Ontario's fish species? There's a ton of trial and error. There's, I have Ziploc bags with freezer bags full of plastics that, that I wasn't happy with or that, you know, were tearing too quickly or, you know, that weren't standing up to what I was doing, even in my test tank. <laughs> so, you know, you know, it's not good. And, and that stuff doesn't make it out into the packs. You know, when I'm, when I'm bagging stuff, I'm constantly doing the pull tests. I'm doing, you know, holding up to the light to see if there's any air bubbles in it or anything like that. Um, do you ever do the bite test? I don't do the bite test. Oh. Uh, it, it doesn't doesn't apply or it doesn't doesn't appeal <laughs> to me. You know, That's too bad. I'm not a fish, so it's it's a little bit different. I need to know that if your teeth doesn't go through it, a pike's teeth won't. That's that's what I need to know. See, I'm just putting on like the Silence of the Lambs Red Dragon, like <laughs> fake sharp dentures. He's like, ha ha ha, pike. Pike proof. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Jaws from 007. <laughs> Steel yeah, teeth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These are no good. <laughs> so what, go, what goes into like, just you were talking about salt, because I know a lot of your baits float, which is fantastic, but some of them obviously yeah. need some salt. So like, how do you say, for instance, the stick bait or like a wobbling, like how do you go through that huge process of like finding the perfect sink rate or like durability? Are we talking like a few days, weeks, months? Uh, the wobbling to get the right sinking rate, I'm going to guess it was at least two months of just this is I'm starting off with this amount, throw it in the aquarium and see if it see how it goes. Then, you know, if it was too slow, it wasn't doing what I wanted to do. You know, I adjust things from there. There's little things that we can do with the plastic blends, with the softness, with the durability, with the, you know, the action and stuff like that, with the amount of salt that we put in the, the wobblings and the stick baits are the only ones that I put salt in ever. Um, because those, in my eyes, those are the only two that I would need to sink as a weightless application. Other stuff, like you're fishing a finesse worm on a shaky hit or something like that, 
you don't want that tail to be sinking down and hitting bottom. You want it to be up and floating in the, in the water column and catching current, right? So you want that natural action. You don't want it falling down, being limp, just laying on the bottom. It doesn't, that's just not going to trigger any bites, you know? Yeah. So that's why, you know, a lot of, all, I, all of my baits don't have salt in them for that reason. I want to have lifelike action, things that replicate realistic movements in the water and, and they're not just, Oh, I'm using salt because it tastes better. And like that, that's, you know what? You're not a fish. <laughs> I'm not a fish. I, I'm not going to say it tastes like salt. Yeah. It tastes better to me on a steak, but I don't know how, how a fish's mind works, you know? So I'm not, I'm not a fish. So. <laughs> <laughs> so my question for you is if you don't use salt, have you ever even considered using pepper? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that would trigger more or if that would repel you know, them, cause them to, yeah, <laughs> cause them to swim away. So before we go on, I just thought we could talk mm. about some of the wham baits that we've actually used. So sure. now, like we said, me and Andrew have been huge. Well, we try to be as big of supporters as we can for all the local bait makers, not just wham baits, but today we're talking about wham baits. So everyone else, no, we never buy your baits. Just kidding. <laughs> a whole like wall full of them over here, but we started buying Wham baits a few years ago uh, when we met Wes through Instagram, but then we saw him at CanCast. And by the way, you're at CanCast this year. So on April 7th, make sure you check out Wham's booth. Mm -hmm. Call him Wham. Absolutely. That's what I do. It's cool. It's fine. I answered everything. Everything? Ooh. But anyway, hey, you. some of the best baits <laughs> that I found, and again, lots of great baits that he makes, but these are the coolest ones that I would recommend because we've had good success is the Wobblin. Wes was kind of talking about this. This is a, we talked about this last year in our podcast uh, about stick baits, but the Wobblin is very, it's unique. Like you said, it's similar to a stick bait, but it is unique because it has kind of a bulge in the middle. It kind of tapers thinner in the middle and then gets fat on the edges. So it has a very, look at that. <laughs> it has a very, very good wobble. It looks like Jesse's mustache just came to life. <laughs> yes, it does. If I had a green pumpkin mustache, I would be so happy. <laughs> Just kidding. That's like flu season. But this is this was one bait that me and Andrew both did really good on last year. Wacky rigging it as well. I also, one time, I just broke one off and used it as like a mini Ned. Super, super versatile, yep. right? And I noticed yep. with Wes, a lot of your baits, they're very versatile, right? You, It's not like you can only use it for one thing. You can You can cut it in half and guess what? Now you have a Ned or you can do this or do that. Yeah, one of my favorite ways to do it is actually using it as a Ned with that and leaving mm -hmm. that ball as like a ball tail on it. Um, so it's not directly in half, but you leave a little bit on, basically be looking like that. You can, you can even put that and almost use it as a swim bait too, just the ball on the end. You could. That, yeah. that ball tail gets wicked action when you're just cranking. It gets really good action. Uh, the fourth question, we kind of uh, were talking about how you ensure the quality of your base and you were mentioning like, you know, all this testing. So I'll give you an example, a story actually. So there was another guy who used to make baits, just started out. He's not around anymore for whatever reason, but mm. I kind of knew him. I bought a bunch of baits off of him and he, he was like, oh, these are the best baits. They work great. They're you know super good and all this stuff. So I bought three or four bags of his, of his stick baits, like five inch stick baits. And they looked good. The packaging was good. And yeah. I took them out fishing and I went through a pack in about 20 minutes. So I Texas rigged the bait and it split open instantly. I broke one off when I casted it. They were just like, the plastic was way too soft. Like it literally just ripped apart. It was full of salt. I, I couldn't even use it. Like I felt bad because I was like littering in the water because I'd cast and the whole bait would just rip off the hook and fly into the water. And I was like, man, this guy obviously didn't even test these baits. I just spent like, you know, I mean, it wasn't a ton of money. It was like three or four bags of stick baits, but it was like, you know, 30 bucks or something. Right. But I was like, you didn't even test them. And he, and I bought them yeah. and then I messaged him and I was like, Hey, you know, they, they pretty much broke man. And he was just like, Oh, well, I have more testing to do. I was like, that's terrible customer service. And like a waste of my money too. He didn't even offer to give me new ones, but that just goes to show me like with Wes, we know we've been buying his baits for a while. And just from what you've been telling us, so much testing goes into it. And the customers obviously appreciate that. And going into the fourth point, finally, I'm getting around there right now, <laughs> is what sets your baits apart from those larger, bigger brands that you could buy at a tackle shop? And the one thing I would say is the durability. Like Wobblins, we did a video last year when we were fishing and, and I said to Andrew, give this a stretch. Remember that? Compared to another you know, popular stick bait, we're not going to bash other, other brands, but you could just pull that thing and it would break in half pretty easily. And these... They're not like a last tech, like Z-Man, like you can't stretch them three feet, but yeah. these are very, very durable, yeah, very yeah. durable. So very impressed with that. So how would you answer that question? What sets your baits apart from the bigger brands? 
Well, I think we've, we've kind of covered it a little bit on a couple of different bases here. I think the unique profiles that, that I've been able to find is one way. Uh, that's very visual. It's a first, it's a base response is, is that looks like something that I've never seen before, right? The second thing is the durability. Uh, I want to make sure that I, I, I want to see people catching fish and having fun fishing. And that includes, you know, casting and retrieving. It doesn't, re- it doesn't include re-rigging and, and putting a new plastic on every three casts. You know, that's not fun. <laughs> I know from experience. So I wanted other people to be able to have a good time and enjoy fishing and have these positive interactions with the outdoors and, and with, you know, with fishing itself. That was important to me. The other thing, like we said, is versatility. I wanted to be able to have, you know, I don't want somebody to feel like they have to have 20 different baits in their, in their bag, just because, because somebody told them, oh, you need this, 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 and this. If you get, you know, a couple packs of say wobblins, right? You can use them as a number of different things. So I wanted to be able to cover a bunch of different applications with one type of bait. And that I feel would provide value for the customer and make them feel like, you know, I'm looking out for their best interest and what they want to do as well. So it's not, you know, some of the big bait brands, they're not owned by one person. They're owned by a multi-million dollar or billion dollar holding company that has shareholders. And that's who they're beholden to, right? If a bait breaks off and they have to re-rig another one, well, that's another bait down. And, and then eventually they're going to have to buy another pack and buy another pack and buy another pack. And that makes their shareholders, whole shareholders very happy. But it doesn't make the customers happy in, in my eyes. That wouldn't make me super, yeah, super definitely. happy. So with with your uh, with your baits, I'm sure like you've heard feedback from us about what we like and uh, you know what all the things we don't like. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you hear a lot of like good feedback because again you you <laughs> you have a you do have a good product. Like I can wholeheartedly say that. I know Jesse, like we use your stuff and we've been using your stuff even before you know we had this podcast going and and you were supporting us, helping us out, being being that gold member. <laughs> even Jesse can't resist him, but. Uh, have you ever heard uh, like some memorable stories or success like moments uh, from people catching like some, some cool stuff on your baits? Yeah. One of the, one of the first ones uh, was he's on Instagram and we kind of connected. He's, he's out of, uh, he was in Toronto um, and, and recently moved, but um, you know, we, we connected and, and fished in Brampton and, and stuff like that. I brought a few packs of just, you know, just stuff that I was playing around with just for him. We had a, you know, we had a fishing day, whatever, but then he took those packs and went kind of up North with, uh, with one of his buddies and stuff, caught his PB largemouth on the, one of the baits that I gave him. I was like, yes, like that's awesome. And then, you know, last year there was a couple more guys that, that, um, sent me pictures of, of PBs and I'm, I love dude like that is, that makes my day. Honestly, when somebody sends me a picture of a catch, any catch, it doesn't matter if it's PB. I don't care. Yeah, I, I want to see those pictures, dude. I, it's, it's almost better than me catching a, a fish myself. When I see my baits catching fish for other people, that is, uh, that's why I do this. What, that means that, you know, somebody's having a good day. Somebody's having fun. Somebody's having a good time. And, and that means the world to me, honestly. I'm just going to put this out there. Any listeners that are catching on Wham Baits, post it up on Instagram. I'll repost and, and you are making this dude's day. Uh, now a little random question I, I just thought of. Um, uh oh. Do you know if if and I'm, I'm going to say this, I'm going to phrase it very carefully. So, are you aware of perhaps any of your baits being used in the pro circuit yet? Because I think at some point guys will be starting to use use your stuff down, you know, in tournaments and whatnot. But do, are you aware of anyone so far that's been testing them out, trying them out? I am aware of a bunch of people on kayak tours, ki- kayak tournaments in that circuit. I have sent some down to guys that are uh, in qualifiers for MLF and stuff like that. That's I'm not okay. going to go into who and, <laughs> and all that stuff. But one of the cool, besides all that, one of the cool things was like uh, a private fishing lake in Texas emailed me just out of the blue and said, Hey, uh, I just ordered a half dozen packs. You know, when you, you know, after show, I, and I was, you know, corresponding back and forth and saying, you know, we got show season coming up and I'm super busy. And he was cool to wait. I, I pushed them out and I got them to him. But he, he ended up being the head guide for a <laughs> private fishing club. And he's like, dude, I love these baits. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I love how they look and stuff like that. Second cast, he fired out, caught a huge bass with wobblins and stuff like that. So he said, you know, 
basically after show season, we're going to talk like volumes and stuff like that. And that's like, cool. that's the that, dream that sends me to another yeah. level. Like, that's just like, yeah, man, like that's, that's awesome. Um, for me to, to get that, that kind of feedback. You know why he, why he's so excited because Americans, if they order baits from Canada it, to them, it's like an imported like lure. It's like, Oh, I, I imported these lures all the way from, from the snow valleys. All the way from Canada. I'm uh, I'm going to start a new trend called CDM. It's going to be the Canadian domestic market. Yeah. <laughs> I buy them all the time. They're, they're I'm going to send great. them to Japan and just go the other way. <laughs> so before we get into the next question, I thought I would add another question. Of all the molds that you have and all the baits you produce, what are three baits that you think if someone was going to order three of your baits and, and the colors of those baits, what three would mm-hmm. they be? So I would, the very first one is the, the wobbling that we were talking about green pumpkin copper killer color in any water clarity that's my favorite that's my yeah, favorite color yeah. yeah especially clear to uh to lightly stained water um it's deadly it mimics so many different things the second one that's a tough one i would probably i would probably go with you know what that was it's up there the amphibian <laughs> is up there but I got to go with this guy. I'm going to do this, Andrew. <laughs> this one is coming out for CanCast, and that is the Swimpleton. Um, that's a three and a quarter inch uh, little swim bait. And that I, I had a story. I was going to tell you that one too, Andrew, when you were asking for positive uh, yeah. positive stories or feedback and stuff like that. So so I was fishing this up in a cottage that we rent every summer with the family and stuff like that. I was fishing this around docks. I was firing it out on a, on a quarter ounce you know, swim bait head. A seven foot one, medium light, 10 pound braid to like six pound liter, to six pound floral liter. And I was just like finessing, right? And I fired over to the corner of the dock, hit it perfectly. And it falls down one, two. And this thing just takes off like a freight train. So I'm pulling in and I see it jumping. It's a pike. I'm like, holy crap. Like, And it was a big one. And I'm pulling this in and I'm thinking, I'm going to get snapped off any second. Like these teeth are going to go like right through the six pound floral. There's no chance. So I'm like, just I'm reeling in, reeling in, reeling in and thinking this thing's going to take just any second. We got it in the net. And as soon as it gets in the net, you're ting, <laughs> and the, the floral just, just snaps off. But I caught the oh. cut. It was, it was in its mouth perfectly. Wow. Um, but that, and that was, we were bass fishing. We didn't really have anything to, to weigh or, or anything. We we're just goofing around. Right. But I have a picture of it. It's it's from my shoulder to my waist easily, and it was a. Uh, I was like, it works. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, that's two so that's, baits. That's two. That's the, so that's the uh, the Swimbleton, and that's just a plain green pumpkin. Um, the one I used was the GP Purple to catch that pike, but any uh, just about any color is going to work. Green pumpkin is green pumpkin. Um, <laughs> it's the best. And I think in terms of in terms of versatility. I'm going to say one of the new ones that's coming out for CanCast, if that's if that's okay. Um, well, it's, it's up to you. Here. Yeah, it's this guy here. That is the Wambunctious. That's a three and a half inch jig trailer. But in terms of versatility um, and effectiveness, you can use that for a lot of different applications. Um, you can use it as a jig trailer. You can use it Texas rig. You can flip it into weeds and stuff like that. On a, on a swim jig head, you can use it just for anything. Do you think uh, would that would that float with a uh, two watt finesse? Oh yeah, worm hook? yeah. The, everything floats on that. So you're, you're, I mean, the 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 sink is controlled by the weights, right? So if you Texas rig that, it's going to yeah. sit down and it's going to sit up like this in the in the current, just flat back and forth. These appendages can separate, so you can they can flap independently as well. And that is, I'm super excited for that one, guys. Like that is gonna <laughs> that's gonna do really well at CanCast. I hope. It's up to it you guys. Was. It's up to the listeners um, <laughs> and the attendance at the show. So, but I'm super impl- uh, super uh, impressed with that one. How it how it performs in the water, how it swims, how it moves. So, I think that one's going to be a big one this year, for sure. Like we've used other similar style baits uh, like that one. So basically, if you're listening and you didn't see what Wes was holding up, it's pretty much like it's a grub body with two like flappy tails on the back. So we would use that all the time for like a mm-hmm. chatterbait trailer, like all the yeah. time. Super yeah. classic for that. But yeah, you can flip that, pitch it, put it on a buzz bait. Like Andrew said, you could fish it like super finesse, like Andrew style. Just even <laughs> on a on a spinner bait trailer and we'll have it vertically. So instead of like being yeah. horizontal, vertically, and it's like uh like it's like a sunfish like swimming in behind. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And and the 
I know Jesse was holding up the amphibian. I'm going to give that an honorable mention in that either bone or black, either one of those. It's meant for top water, obviously, but don't sleep on rigging it Texas either. And just, you know, subsurface. And just a steady retrieve and let those legs just go nuts mm-hmm. under the water. Take that over, you know, a foot above some weeds and stuff like that or outside of a weed line and that thing's going to get smoked. What per- what percentage would you think would be the effectiveness of that lure? Oh, 100. Easily. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I'd like to add about Wes, and it's not just because I'm a special guy because I totally am, but sometimes Wes will ask me questions and be like, yo, what do you think about this mold? And I'm like, yeah, I like it. It looks good. He's like, would you use it? And I'm like... No. And he's like, okay, good. He does his research. He talks to people. And that kind of goes in our next question. How do you engage with the local fishing community and gather feedback to improve your bait designs? That is, that's something that's super important to me. I have a, I have a group chat with uh, six or seven guys that were, yeah, Jesse's in it, but that were, Andrew, you'd be in it if you had a cell phone. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, these guys have kind of been my earliest and most loyal supporters just from day one, pretty much. And guys that were customers that started off as customers, bought my stuff, paid full price, you know, and they were, you know, super impressed with how they caught, how they worked, how they fished. Um, and just, you know, I took it upon, I asked them obviously, but I didn't just blindly add them, but saying, Hey, do you want to, are you able to, you know, participate in this and just be able to bounce feedback off you and, and get ideas from you and stuff like that. And these guys are all over Ontario you know, fishing all kinds of different, different waters. And I rely on them for stuff that I can't get out and fish myself. Right. You know, I'll take that feedback. I'll, I'll send out, you know, anything from t-shirt designs to molds to things that I'm looking at in the future and colors or patterns or anything, you know, anything. Um, they're my guys. Um, that's my, my way ambassadors. So they're, uh, they're like a, they're like a pro staff, but yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, those are the guys that, that I, rely on for for some some feedback and stuff like that obviously i'm not saying every single little thing and that is decided basically uh, just by them it's it's stuff that i'm bringing to them and saying hey what do you think of this or or this idea this kind of you know will this provide value for the average ontario angler the who i don't know that just you know, it just rolled off my tongue he said it he said the thing <laughs> <laughs> i said the thing well i was, I was just gonna say like I, i'm excited to see a lot of your new baits at at, again, Cancast is when I know I'll be seeing you next. So, and uh, I know you're releasing a few there. There's going to be a ton of stuff rolling out of Cancast. Honestly, there's, yeah. I think there's five or six different things rolling out of Cancast. I've lost track. And then after Cancast into the <laughs> summer, I think there's another three or four that I'm, that I'm holding back on. So I'm I'm super excited for 2024, guys. Like honestly, I'm gonna bring in a couple uh, just in case leaders. So next time you catch a pike on one of your baits, you'll you'll have more confidence in landing that thing. Yeah, I won't lose it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And going further on, on engaging with the community, you know, that's something that's really huge for me. I don't do this to make a pile of money to sit back on a, at the end of the day. I don't, I don't come home and I dive into <laughs> Scrooge a Scrooge McDuck. A, a pile of gold coins, like Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was wondering if you guys were old enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like I want to be able to provide for charity tournaments and fundraisers and, and stuff like that. I did a lot last year. You know, I'm not boasting at all. I'm this is one of my goals as a, as a brand, as a company is to donate more brand, more baits than I sell every year. And last year, like it was, it was a good year. And, and, but I was able to support a number of different fundraising initiatives, charities that are, that are, you know, working in the community and doing stuff. Um, that's super important for me to give back to, to the community and to, you know, the, the heroes that don't all wear capes. Right. So there's a lot of people out there doing good stuff and I'm happy to support them however I can with, you know, using fishing as a medium. So I think, uh, I think that's super important for me to be able to engage with the community in that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's definitely apparent even at CanCast last year, I remember you were just handing out baits to kids. Like here's a pack of baits. Here's a pack of baits. What I did yeah. is I pretended to walk by like a child and see if I could get a pack, but unfortunately <laughs> I don't look like a kid. So it didn't work. So we'll go on to the next question. Are there any specific challenges you face as a small bait maker in Ontario and how do you overcome those challenges? Tons. Honestly, as a, I don't do this full time. I have a full time job. I have family. I have a house. I've got a, I've got a lot of priorities that have to come first before, before fishing baits. So time is the biggest one for me, um, especially coming up to show season. It's <laughs> I'm, I'm doing, you know, four hours of sleep a night, just trying to push out baits 
and, and be ready for the show and still, you know, be able to take care of the stuff that I need to take care of during the day. It's not an easy thing to do. It's, it's a balancing act, honestly. And, and that's not, I'm not wearing that as a badge of honor or anything like that, but that's the truth. That's the, that's the reality of, of, you know, this is a hobby that turned into a job. It's a jobby. I, I just made <laughs> that up. I just, that just, that just came out. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. I, I don't think it'll catch on, but okay. Yeah, I don't think it'll catch on either, but I was impressed <laughs> with myself. <laughs> well, speaking of making up words, I'm sure you've told us before, but I have a terrible, mem- terrible memory. The name Wham Bates, like what made you come up with that name? Uh, so Wham Bates is, is basically mine and my son's name put together. It's, it's the initials. It's Wes and Aiden Matlas. And that was, it wasn't, you know, Wham spelled wrong or <laughs> anything like that. It's, it's 100% less George Michael. <laughs> um, that is, that's that that's the key but you can still um, have my credit card, card baby that's i want some baits that's it that's all i need <laughs> i do enjoy the names of your baits a lot of them include the word wham which is pretty fun whenever you come yeah, up with a new bait i'm like i wonder what he's gonna call this one <laughs> <laughs> actually somebody, somebody said that uh the other day is like i put enough time into the baits i need to put my like put the same amount of time and effort into the names <laughs> yeah just for our, our listeners that maybe haven't seen some of your baits, uh, what are some of the names of your baits? So I've got Wambolt Jr. That's a four and a half inch finesse worm. This one doesn't have Wham in it at all, but it's the Patriot Worm. And a lot of the names are based on something Canadian that is available only through the Great Canadian Fishing Store, which I am super pumped and happy to be part of that team you guys had them on the previous episode so impressed with the team that they put together the the collection of vendors that they've put together the the independent canadian local makers guys i can't say enough about about the the people that we have making baits and tackling ontario right now and and canada that's that's also one of (laughs) one of my big things is supporting local i'm gonna do it right now support local so that is one i just i just held up my shirt that says support local. <laughs> for all the people that can't see, I'm forgetting this isn't really. We pulled up a shirt. We saw his stomach. I'll censor it out after. By the way, he has a six pack. People. Yes, he does. Eight. That's an eight. It's yeah. an eight pack. Yeah. <laughs> I also can't count. <laughs> all right. So the giveaway this week, as we mentioned, is actually provided to us by Wham Bates, of course. Surprise! Imagine if we actually had another Something brand else. sponsoring it. I'm like, and we'd like to sponsor this brand by Berkeley. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> No, but it's super awesome. We do appreciate all of these companies that we work with that are putting forth these giveaways because, hey, here's the the reality of it. We're not making a dime off this, but we love putting baits in your tackle box. And sometimes a lot of baits. Your tackle box, if it weighs 10 pounds now, it's about to weigh 25 <laughs> pounds because Wes is giving away. Tell us, Wes. $100 worth at Wham Baits Canada on the website. I will give the winner a code and you can just go shopping like nuts. You can't beat that. Sweet. After CanCast. And what, after CanCast. <laughs> after CanCast, please. <laughs> I'll tell you what. We'll announce the winner on Patreon. That's the only way you can that you're entering. So these giveaways, as always, they're for our Patreon supporters. Go onto the Patreon app or go on the website and you are automatically entered with some exceptions. If you live in like Beijing or something, unfortunately, we're not going to ship it to you. But if you live in Canada or North America, basically, you are automatically entered to this. So after CanCast, we will draw that so that Wes doesn't have to worry about that before that. Because, hey, show season is crazy, man. It's crazy. I can see Wes is already <laughs> starting to sweat. Already, right through the hat. So we appreciate that. 100 bucks of Wham Baits is a lot of baits. So that's literally like... <laughs> that's that's, that's more than 100. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we appreciate it. I was at the Sportsman Show the other day. I actually got there on Friday. Unfortunately, Wes was there on Saturday, I think you said. Yeah, you said you're coming Saturday. I was trying to go Saturday. I was like, I want to see Wes. Well, I lined up with what you said, yeah. and then you did something <laughs> else. So I just think you hate me. <laughs> so anyway, on Friday, I did get to go to the Great Canadian Fishing Store at the Sportsman Show. And it was super nice to meet those guys and see all of the all of the brands there. Like you said, there's tons of stuff. They had just dozens and dozens and dozens of things, all from local, all across Canada. So I guess not local, but all, you know, it's all small makers all across Canada. Yeah. It was great to see. And yeah, Wes had his stuff there and, you know, I looked at it and I was like, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely check them out too. I'll put the link uh, for their store in the bio too, because you can buy some exclusive Wham baits that's only sold at the great Canadian fishing store. So definitely check that out. For sure. Now we got to keep going because we're going to go over time and Andrew gets mad when that happens. Because it's bedtime. No, that's okay. He can he can go home and then we can just record the rest. Of it. 
every time Wes sends me pictures, sometimes there's baits and he's like, oh, maybe I'm working on this one. Don't tell anyone. Like, And I'm just like, oh man, when's this coming out? He actually sent me a picture today at work. And I hate when he does that because I'm trying to, you know, concentrate at work, you know, and use power tools. And he's like, hey, check this out. And I'm like, well, what is that? And he's like, shh. <laughs> but what future developments or expansions do you envision for your bait making business in the future? Like, I know you got a ton of stuff coming out, so that's big. Yeah. You guys want the juice. Um, I want the juice. I, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff coming out. I, like I said, there's a, there's a ton of different profiles coming out for CanCast this year. I've got stuff lined up for summer and fall this year and maybe even into next year. It depends on on <laughs> how, how the flow of work goes. But I think improving the operation right now, improving the efficiency, every dollar, like I said, I'm not uh, sitting on a, on a pile of money over here. Like I, every dollar that, that comes in from Bates gets reinvested into the company increasing efficiency, improving, you know, processes and stuff like that, being able to just give a better product, faster timelines, delivery is, is big for me. You know, sometimes it's a grind being able to reinvest into the company is, is a big thing for me. And, and that sometimes I don't know where it's going to go. Um, I'd love to improve the packaging and stuff like that from, from what it is, you know, bagging and tagging things is a ridiculously onerous task sometimes, especially when you're making 600 packs of product for a certain show coming up in April. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. I don't know. But Kyle Carruthers is going to kill me if I don't say it again. <laughs> <laughs> we told him that in every podcast, we have to say it 872 times. And, he, and for that, he's paying us 872 cents. <laughs> Perfect. Well, like he says, he pays weekly, right? Yeah. <laughs> <Very weekly. laughs> yeah. So just to drive that point clear, like Come to CanCast. CanCast, Kyle, the other day, like when this, when you're listening to this episode, if you're listening to it on Sunday or maybe Monday when this first comes out, like CanCast is in one week. CanCast is literally one week away. I know we're recording this maybe two weeks away, but. You just gave me like hard palpable. Yeah. Like, like CanCast <laughs> is one week anxiety. away <laughs> when this thing airs. So if you haven't got yeah. your tickets, just get them and go. It's the biggest fishing show in Canada. It is insane. You could literally spend eight to 10 hours in there, no problem and not see everything. So bring a yep. big wad of cash, bring your wham wallet full of wham bills. No, actually real bills. Take wham bills. Yeah, he doesn't take wham bills, but, <laughs> and buy some wham baits. So it's not even just for me. I, I, I want to promote every local Ontario and, and Canadian maker out there. Like there's so many guys, like there's so many guys out there, you know, from, from limestone lures that we've had on before, jacked up jigs. Hashimoto gosh, concepts. Hashimoto. Yeah. yeah. There, I'm going to forget so many people, but there's, there's just look at the vendor list and anybody on there is just, just go and support. Like, honestly, these guys are, are just, you know, like me, we're just grinding away in our garages, in our basements, in our workshops, putting our blood, sweat and tears into these things just for, you know, to make sure that, that other people can have a good time fishing. And another um, thing too, is like at, at Cancast, they're going to have the great Canadian fishing store has right. a, yeah. is there themselves. But you also yeah. have the opportunity, like they're there, Wes sells his stuff through them, but Wes will also be there along with a lot of these other guys who are, are on that website in that group will also be there in person with their own booth. So this is a great opportunity to actually see the guys who are single-handedly making these baits, you know, by themselves or with their family in their garage, in their basement. And you get to see these guys and see the passion that they have for it. So yeah, it's it's going to be awesome again. And as Wes is a is a great example of, of someone who has that passion and that drive I to, to get I that say done. Great. I'm an example. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have the vendor list right here. I thought we could just quickly go through to For sure. if you're going to CanCast and you already know, like you've been there before, you know how big it is. But if you haven't been to CanCast, there is an insane vendor list. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna try to read them all. So listen, go this is it. just gonna do get it. you excited. Let's so do it. we excited. have Bobby Belmonte from 2B Fishing Guiding Service, 50 Inch Apparel, 6 Cents, 911 Baits, Abu Garcia, Luma Marine, American Bait Works, ASM Outdoors, Be My Baits, Bait Casters, Bait Fuel, Bass Magnet, Beaver Lures, Beeline Baits, Berkeley, BJ's Tackle, Blackfly Lures, Blind Rage Baits, Blue Collar Angling, Boatland Canna, Bonafide, Borka, BR2 Printing, Bubba, Canadian Bass, Canadian Fishing Network, CanCast Gear Store. Kyle has his own place. He also has his own podcast. <laughs> yes, too. The CanCast <laughs> yeah, podcast. The CanCast too. podcast is going to be there. CB Lures, Choppy Water Bait Company, CL Fishing, Cottage Country Lifestyle Magazine, Creek Candy Bead Company, CFSL, Daiwa Das King Kayaks, Dead End Lures, Decoy Hooks, Discount Fishing Wholesale, Duo Realis Raid Japan, Enjoy Life Outdoors Products, Fearless Fish Baits, Fenwick, FishEasy.ca, Fishing Frenzy Foundation, uh, Fog Marine, Freedom Tackle, Frontenac Outfitters, G3 Boats, Garmin, Geiger Tech, 
Generation Outdoors, Get Fishing, Get It Wet, Sport Fishing, Go Large Fish Rulers, Goat Angling Adventures, Canadian Fishing Store, Great Lakes Finesse, Great Lakes Tungsten, Greg Atard Outdoors and Guide Service, Gremlins Custom Baits, Guided Line Sport Fishing. I'm not even on the second page yet. This isn't even halfway <laughs> through, people. Oh, don't stop. Don't stop now. Yeah, don't stop now. Keep going. <laughs> Halo Fishing, Handlebars, Musky Lures, Hashimoto Concept, Hookers. Not actual hookers, but the brand hookers. <laughs> Hobie, HKRS. Huck, Huron Bass Tour, Hurricane, Icon Boats, Impact Baits, Icon Batteries, Jacked Up Jigs, JB's Fishing Depot, Jeff's Jigs, JVM Custom Lures, Casper Lake Lodge, Kortha Fishing Apparel, Kortha Crush Baits and Molds, Kayak Bass Canada, Keep Canada Fishing, Kite Flies, Lake Simcoe Power Box, uh, Lamores Outdoors, Last Cast Canada, Legend Boat, Lures, Limestone Lures, Lindsay Bassmasters, Live Outdoors, Lebowski Musky Lures, Lucky Strike Bait Works, Mac Attack Outdoors, Mega Jigs, Mega Sting Outdoors, Missile Baits, Emma KT Lures, Molex Muskies Canada, Muskies Canada Kortha Chapter, Musky Maniacs, Native Kayaks, Net Baits, Nichols Lures, Dirty Jigs, uh, Nishini Lure Works, Northern Leisure Marine, OFC Nation, Old Town, Ontario Bass Nation, Ontario Kayak Bass Trail. That's the first page, people. Okay, <clears throat> I'm getting there. Do you want me to go to the second, Jesse? Yeah. Go! Ontario Women's Anglers, Owen Sound Salmon Sp Spectacular, Peterborough Bassmasters, Peterborough Carp Guides, Fluger, PFR, Prey Fish Repeat, Plano, Plexus, Power Pro, Pro J Fishing Tackle, Pro Water Baits, Peterborough Pro Tackle, Quantum Fishing, Raw Fish, Raw Fish, uh, G, G Bay Team Series, Ranger Boats, Rapala, Redneck Fishing Series, Scotty, Scum Frog, Set the Hook, Seven, Say Doggy Fishing, Shimano, Shootout Fishing League, Skeeter, Smith and Sons Bait and Tackle, Snag Proof, St. Croix, Sticks and Stones, Stony Lake Combo, Suncatcher, Swamp Donkey Baits, Tackle Bros, Tackle Depot, The Cure is Outdoors, The Perfect Jig, The Power Garage, The Rod Glove, Thirsty Lures, Top Sonar, Tournament Lithium, Triton Boats, True North Baits, Under Armour, Under the Lock Fishing Derby, Upper Canada Marine, Vexus Boats, Wham Baits, what? <laughs> Water Wolf Lures, Weapons of Bass Destruction, Winoga Lodge, Wu Tungsten, X Zone Lures, Yellow Tech Canada. And over 75 swap tables, giveaway door prizes, and that so much more. Event. And freely roaming around the site the whole day, recording stuff. Average Ontario <laughs> anglers, if you do see us, come say hi. I know a lot of people last year were like, I saw you, I didn't want to say hi, you Absolutely. look busy. I'm like, always interrupt at shows, and I'll tell you why. You'll never get an edge in, because me and Andrew like talking. Like, I was at the Sportsman show, and I saw Jay Siemens, and I kept like <laughs> trying to get and talk to him, and people were always there when I went to see him, and I got to the point where I'm like, this guy's been talking to him for 20 minutes. I was just like, uh, yeah, hi, <laughs> it's me. <laughs> and by me, he doesn't know who the heck yeah, I am. But you. I was I'm like, talking. hey, how's it going? I love yeah. you. One of my favorite things that we did last time is is everyone we talked to is is like, hey, you know, you know, I love, you know, people would come up and say, oh, we like listening to, uh, we didn't even have the podcast really out for long, but they loved, you know, our content or whatnot. And we're like, oh, thank you very much. And then yeah. we just talk about what we bought so far at the show. <laughs> like, like, hey, what's in your bag? What'd you get? And it's like some of the funnest things to see what other people saw. And, and then that's a, a really cool way to see, oh, where'd you get that? Because I want to get that too. Because like we said so many times, you walk around and you miss. You miss, miss, miss all kinds of stuff. So keep walking. Do multiple grid, grid yep. patterns <laughs> following every single booth. And then look in other people's bags and find out where they got that really cool thing. And you go Absolutely. find that. <laughs> And look in people's bags when they're not looking and take stuff, but put it back. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't steal. Kyle will Kyle will be really mad. Kyle, that is, you know, he has bouncers now this year. I hear. Well, Sean and Mark are only so Big tough. Good. So. Good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, this was a pretty fun episode. It's if you have thought about making your own baits, you may at this point be like, you know what? I think I could do it. Or you might be like, that sounds like a nightmare. So this was a good episode because it either has taught you that it is a good thing or something that you might just want to buy instead, like me and Andrew. Me and Andrew are like, man, we'd love to make baits. And then we're like, we ain't got no time for that. So we just yeah. buy our baits from Wham Baits and some of these other guys. So that was an absolutely awesome show. Great. We would like to thank Wes from Wham Baits. And we're really excited. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. To see you at CanCast in absolutely. person again. Mm -hmm. And again, again that's yep. April 7th at the Memorial Center in Peterborough. And make sure you get there because Wham will be there as well as the, what, 17 million people we just All named today on the there. podcast. <laughs> so before we end this podcast, as usual, as tradition states, we have the quote of the week. And to handle that this week on the spot is Wes from Wham Bates. Support local, do good, and, and pay it forward. <laughs>